Hi, I'm Robert Curtis. I'm the head instructor of the Distance Calculus program. In this video, I'm going to explain a little bit about the probability theory course. Now, probability theory is a uh, very high course. It is usually at the sophomore or junior level. Uh, in in college and it has a prerequisite of uh, multivariable calculus. The reason why is because this flavor of probability is calculus based. Um, the lower course than this is called statistics. And this is generally a course that is taken by really anybody. Statistics is a, a very common course uh, for uh, non-science majors. Math majors generally don't take statistics. In fact, I never took statistics when I was a student. Um, so it's a course that's usually it's taken by uh, nursing students, psychology students, uh, humanities students sometimes take statistics and um, this is not the statistics course. And in fact, you, uh, you do not need to have taken statistics before to start the probability class. Even though the top, a lot of the topics are the same in both of these courses, this course is going to use calculus, it's going to use derivatives and integrals, uh, and really very powerful, um, a, a very powerful uh, application of calculus to probability. And so it's required that you actually have multivariable calculus under your belt. We're going to be using double and triple integrals uh, in our study of probability. Um, that being said, uh, it is interesting that the topics of probability and the topics of the lower statistics course, they, they have a very common, uh, uh, very, very shared topics. And in fact, I uh, extracted from the probability curriculum the lower course on statistics uh, from the higher course on probability. So it, it's very interesting. But you do not need to have taken statistics to engage in probability, you only need multivariable calculus. And you do not need to go back and take statistics after it. This one course will obliterate whatever you might have uh, learned in the lower statistics course. Um, the curriculum that we use is a text called uh, Probability and Mathematica. And it's by the team of Davis, Porta, and Yule. Davis from The Ohio State University and Porta and Yule from the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana. This curriculum uses Mathematica very strongly. In fact, it is the tool of choice. And this is meant to be a course for sophomores or even juniors in college. And um, it is a very challenging course. It is using calculus uh, really as an application to the topics in probability theory. And so you really do need to master, have a mastery of uh, multivariable calculus. If your skills in multivariable calculus or even calculus two are on the weak side, let's say you got a C in either of those courses, this probability course is probably not advised for you. Um, multivariable, as I talked about in a different video, is a wonderful course where you get to learn single variable calculus sort of as a consolation prize to going through multivariable calculus. It is not the case in the probability course that if you have weak calculus skills, multivariable and single variable calculus skills, that you can then, you know, sort of make up for it in probability theory. You really can't. Uh, it's it's ve a, a very challenging course, and um, it has uh, it it really requires a solid calculus background to start it. So if you have a weaker calculus background, 
if you got a C in multivariable calculus, uh, then probably it's worth an email to me to discuss your plans and your needs to go into probability theory and what we can do to uh, improve your skills uh, in order to attack the probability theory course. Um, my favorite part of the probability and Mathematica curriculum is a line of um, problems which are kind of known as gambler's ruin. The authors, and specifically uh, Jerry Uhl, uh, had a great fascination with uh, gambling and um, a number of the applications in probability, which is common for almost all probability courses uh, and textbooks, uh, really, is um, the idea of analyzing various gambling games and seeing, you know, what is a strategy for um, being able to su succeed at those games or understanding what unsuccessful strategies are in various gambling games. Um, the, these are not the only applications. There's many, many applications to uh, analysis of various data sets that are taken from a wide range of applications. But it is clear that the authors of this uh, curriculum uh, had a great fascination with the application of uh, probability in, uh, towards gambling games. And uh, it, it's, it's very interesting. So if you have any interest in gambling games, uh, um, You'll, you'll be fascinated with some modules uh, that, that are just amazing. And I've never seen any presentations of those topics in any other book uh, even come close to the amount of detail that they're able to go by using such a powerful tool as Mathematica. Uh, if you are not interested in gambling uh, uh, and gambling applications, um, those modules are going to be less interesting. Uh, and uh, I share that with you. I, I personally don't have an interest in gambling games, um, but it is interesting to read uh, and explore the topics. And you have to, you know, kind of in your mind, see how this could be applied to other things other than playing craps, for example. Um, but having said that, this curriculum is, is very uh, extensive. It is a very long course. It is a very engaged course. It's not something you'll do quickly at all. Uh, I think the world's record is, is still two months uh, because it is so, such an extensive course. Uh, but it's a very rewarding course. Uh, you'll have a great command of statistics and probability theory um, that you'll take with you to you know, your economics majors, your business majors. If you are a business major, Probably, you know, this is a very uh, uh, advanced course and you're not going to be in the calculus sequence. So we're really talking to people who are going forward into economics, uh, studying a master's or for a PhD in economics. And this kind of material is going to be very, very powerful for uh, you to investigate um, those other disciplines. But we also get a number of math majors who are coming into uh, this probability course. Um, most math departments do not mind that you are learning um, a modern approach using the Mathematica tool for probability. Um, I, I've never had a complaint from a math department saying, oh, you're not teaching them the classical approach to probability theory where you have to do all the integrals manually. Um, I think most departments have, um, ha have uh, uh, come to the conclusion that using a tool like Mathematica is okay for probability, whereas they may not be so accepting of a higher tool like this for the linear algebra course or sometimes even the differential equations course. Um, but probability is pretty much uh, accepted that you're going to use a computer tool to get at it. Um, there are higher probability courses that juniors and seniors may take, things like stochastic processes and things like this. This is not uh, for that, but that would be the next course that you would take after this probability course is a course on stochastic processes. Uh, if you're doing a major in statistics, um, uh, then you're probably going to be, uh, this would be sort of the first course you would take before you take your upper division courses on statistics analysis. Um, 
So a very good course indeed. Um, you may, we have a number of students who um, actually are training to be actuaries. You know, uh, an, an actuary is someone who usually works for an insurance company and they analyze data and come to conclusions to help the insurance company make decisions. And there's a whole exam situation for becoming an actuary. Um, there are a number of problems in this curriculum uh, from uh, actuarial exams. Uh, so it is a, an excellent uh, preparation for the uh, actuarial exam. It's not completely the actuarial exam. You cannot just take this course and then be ready to go take your actuarial exams. But it is an excellent first course to get you moving in that direction and then uh, go and take other courses uh, to prepare you for uh, the actuarial exam. We've had a number of students over the years who um, have been studying to be actuaries and they have told me that this course was a great preparation for them uh, to go off and study for their actuarial exams and further coursework in that direction. Um, so it is not uh, an easy course by any means. Uh, the Mathematica involved um, you know, is, is Mathematica is a higher engine to use. Um, we do have this course. I did convert it into the live math software. And we have had some students go through the live math version of the course. Um, it is up to you. It will be a decision that you get to make at enrollment time, whether or not you use Mathematica or you use live math. The students uh, we use live math and multivariable calculus, and we have had a number of students who uh, finished calculus one, calculus two, and multivariable calculus with us using live math, and they wanted to go into probability theory, and they wanted to stick with the live math software, uh, which is cool, uh, and uh, we have been able to, to do that, and I did convert the curriculum to uh, the live math software. There are some places where live math runs out of gas, uh, computational gas as I call it, and Mathematica, of course, has an endless gas tank of power. Um, so it is, uh, there are a couple of places in the curriculum where live math just sort of doesn't have enough oomph to get through it, uh, and you know we have to do some other things. Um, uh, but it is an option for students who did like the live math software and wanted to continue a higher course beyond that using live math. Uh, although I do recommend most students just go into the Mathematica version of the course. It's time to learn a different math program uh, at some point. And certainly for linear algebra and differential equations, we use Mathematica. So it would be best for you to jump off into Mathematica in this course. But the option is there if you wanted to use live math instead. All right, well hopefully this answers some questions for you about the probability course. There are some examples on the page of the curriculum. You probably, not to use a pun, know if you have to take this course or not. So it's usually not a question uh, of which course you should be in. There's something on one of your degree program sheets that says you have to go take probability theory. And it's just a matter of making sure you're in the right one. And this one is the calculus-based probability theory. And if that's the probability course that you need to take, this is the one for you. And like I said, we're using Mathematica. It's a very modern uh, curriculum, a modern approach to the subject. Actually, a number of the examples in the text, um, in the curriculum are actually pulled from a few classical um, textbooks that were written before computers. So it's very interesting to see these examples pulled from more classical books and then, you know, they pound them with Mathematica. And it's really, it's really cool. Uh, but it, it's really a testimony to uh, the author's understanding of the subject and understanding that, you know, even though a probability textbook was written 80 years ago, some of the examples from there are still golden examples and can be utilized even with a modern approach to the subject. So it's kind of a half modern, half classical approach. It still has a lot of tethers back to a classical approach, a classical study of probability. But of course, we're using the power of Mathematica to, uh, you know, 
attack some rather nasty integrals that you would not want to attack manually. And some integrals you can't attack except using a computer. So, you know, you have a, you're faced with a double integral of a very terrible function, a terrible integrand. You can't do it algebraically. What else are you going to do? Well, in a modern approach, you walk over to something like Mathematica and you say, Mathematica, attack. And Mathematica attacks that integral. The key, though, is that you're the human in charge of this tool and you need to know what it's telling you. What, it, what is it doing when it solves it? What does the graph look like? What do the slices look like? of the 3D graph. What are those things telling you and how do you interpret that into the language of probability and, and come to a conclusion about the question that has been posed in probability language. Um, you'll see lots of 3D graphs, uh, lots of 2D graphs, but a lot of 3D graphs, a lot of geometry is actually at the root of uh, probability theory which uh, if you uh, have a classical textbook, you may not see a lot of graphs. Um, and, of course, the ability for uh, raw data to be analyzed by Mathematica is, of course, another benefit uh, in a modern approach to probability and statistics. You know, you've got 500 data points. You're not going to start computing things by hand uh, in, in trying to come up with uh, even the mean, right? You're going to use a computer to do any statistics whatsoever. And of course, um, this course is firmly going to be using the Mathematica software. So you'll do almost no hand calculations in this course at all. There are some hand um, literacy sheets that you'll do by hand without the computer, but those are mainly asking you questions about the theory that you've learned in each module and asking you, uh, you know, if will give you a set with six data points to do some things with it. And that is, of course, reasonable to be able to do by hand. So there are some hand calculations, but the majority is using this very wonderful canon called Mathematica. All right, if you have any questions about this course, please shoot me an email or get on chat with me, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. We look forward to seeing you in the course. Bye-bye.